Dimensions are drawn using the following rules. The numeral should have a size of about 3.5 millimeters. When multiple dimensions are arranged at one side of a geometry, the first dimension is placed at about 12 millimeters from the geometry. All the next dimensions are spaced about 8 millimeters from the previous dimension. A common pitfall when making computer-generated drawings is that the student makes adjustments to the numeral size to make it readable on the computer screen. You should realize that you are creating a drawing which represents an actual piece of paper, the size of which very often exceeds the dimensions of your computer monitor. Font sizes are standardized for readability on the actual piece of paper, so you should not change font types. To summarize, do not scale your dimension font size. Dimensions are always given in millimeters. They should be placed outside of the geometry. Crossing of lines should be kept to a minimum. Crossing of projection lines is preferred over crossing of projection lines and geometry lines. Use a small gap of about two millimeters between the outline and the start of a projection line. Projection lines should continue slightly beyond the dimension line also of about two millimeters. The layout of the projection views and dimensions should be such that the minimum of views is used to describe the part. Make sure the views are properly aligned. Do not use different scales when projecting. Information in the origin view should comply with the projected view, so an item which is visible in both front and top view should be located in the top view exactly in the same horizontal position as it is shown in the front view. Each dimension should appear only once per drawing, which means that a dimension shown at the front view should not be repeated at the top, left or any other view, and dimensions which can be deducted by combining other dimensions may only be shown as auxiliary dimensions with their numerical value given in parentheses. Dimension geometry in whichever view shows that geometry most clearly. If a section view is made to show whole geometry, it makes sense to place the whole dimensions at that section view. Dimensions which belong to a certain feature should be grouped at that feature. Do not use hidden lines for dimensioning. Only thick continuous line type items may be dimensioned and center lines. Dimensions should be placed centrally above the dimension line. For small dimensions, arrows may be placed outside the projection lines. The numeral can be placed at either side of the projection lines if insufficient space is available for central placement. Dimensions should be placed so that they can be read from either the bottom or the right-hand side of the drawing. For that reason, in the example shown, please avoid placing dimensions in the hatched area. Datums should be chosen in each direction of dimensioning. All the dimensions in a direction should refer to the chosen datum. The datum feature is often related to the zero position of a production machine. Consider the lathing production technique. A cylindrical piece of raw material is clamped into the machine. The piece is rotated, chips of material are removed by a tool which moves relative to the turning motion. Step by step, material is removed until a part's final contours are reached. The dimensions in a part which is made by lathing should be presented on a drawing in such a way that the dimension values comply to the distance the tool is travelling relative to the zero point. The first step in lathing a part is to create the first flat surface. This is the reference surface, the zero plane in the first direction. It makes sense that the zero point is present at the rotation axis of the part. The linear dimensions of a lathed part are all given starting at the reference plane, ending at the feature geometry. So do not give the dimensions as shown in the example presented here. This layout of dimensions is called chain dimensioning and is not allowed. Not only does the craftsman lack the information required to produce the part, but the inaccuracies of each dimension add up which leads to greater inaccuracy of the total dimension. The dimensions of the part are placed as follows. Note, the combination of a size and a position dimension can look like a chain dimension, but this combination is allowed. In the triangular crank, 
the middle lightening hole height is 24 mm, located at 20 mm from the datum feature, just like the left lightening hole has a 34 mm height located at 16 mm from the datum. Dimensioning common features. Radii are dimensioned using a dimension line with a single arrowhead. The dimension is preceded by the letter R. Radius dimension lines should pass through or be in line with arc centers. If a convex radius is dimensioned, the arrow points towards the center while the dimension line is present at the outside of the arc. If a concave radius is dimensioned, the dimension line passes through the arc center. You will see the dimension line being extended to the arc center when using Cartier to create radius dimensions, but other applications may end the dimension line at the arc. Circles are dimensioned as shown. The dimension is preceded by the diameter symbol, a circle with a slanted line through it. Only full circles should be dimensioned like this. Do not dimension radii like circles, and do not dimension circles like radii. In the case of a projected outline of a cylindrical object, a centre line should be present as was described in the first video of this series. The projected outlines can be dimensioned similarly to a circle, with numerals preceded by the diameter symbol. A caliper is an instrument that is used to measure items accurately. The jaws of the caliper can be placed around an object, for example, a cylinder's face. Other jaws can be used to measure a hole or gap. Keep the caliper in mind when creating a drawing. If a part is produced, a craftsman will use the dimensions given on a drawing as checkpoints. The best case scenario is that all the important dimensions are given in such a way that a single caliper measurement is sufficient to check the dimension. Angles are dimensioned as shown. The dimension is followed by the degree symbol, a small circle placed to the right above the numeral. The dimension line is actually not a line, but an arc, but the placement and appearance rules are identical to the rules for linear dimension lines, with the numeral used to denote the angle centrally located above the dimension arc. Chamfers are surfaces produced by beveling square edges. Dimension as depicted. The dimension represents a linear distance followed by a multiplication symbol and the value of the angle. In the case of a specific standardized screw thread, which is very often used and is commonly referred to as metric thread, the M symbol can be used. Pitch and major and minor diameter of the thread are captured in the metric thread standard. This means that three dimensions can be captured by a single letter, the M. Always use the outer contour lines of the conventional representation of thread to align with the projection lines. These are thick in the case of an external thread and thin in case of an internal thread. Note, this is the only exception where the thin continuous line type can be used for dimensioning. The depth of the thread is dimensioned by a linear dimension. A specific type of dimensioning can be used in the case of symmetry. The holes in the depicted object can be dimensioned using the line of symmetry as the datum feature in the horizontal direction. In the example shown on the right, the dimension is preceded and followed by the equals to symbol, two short dashes above each other. The center to center dimension can be read directly and the symmetry symbols used indicate that the symmetry line is the datum feature. <laughs>